How's it going, everybody? So, I uh, decided that, just like I said before, in the prior video that I made, I'm just going to talk about WrestleMania 40. Uh, so, yeah, I'm here to do exactly that. Um, so, we're going to get like right into it, right? Because WrestleMania 40 was actually really, really cool. Like, night one and night two really really cool very fun um i actually watched wrestlemania 40 alongside my bestie who i did get into wrestling in general like they had a passing interest uh, uh but you know i have actually a pretty good amount of knowledge of storylines and those characters and things like that from over like many years i've been watching for a very long time so um I was able to clue them in on a lot of things and get them into the drama more. And then they started paying attention to things more themselves. And uh, they've been having fun with it. And this was like their first like WrestleMania coming in more clued in about things. Uh, they did watch last year, but that was when we were first like getting them into it. So, you know, uh, they had fun and I was glad to hear that they did. So, Bestie, if you watch this, uh, it was fun. Thanks for watching with me. Uh, going into things, though. Uh, first match, night one. Rhea Ripley uh, beat Becky Lynch. Um, Rhea Ripley's had the women's title that she's held for, like, literally an entire year. She's she's insane. <laughs> it, she's actually really, really cool, though. Um, and I'm glad that she retained. I am. Um... It was a very good match. Not a whole lot that I can say that's going to stick to my memory personally, but they they killed it out there. They did, um, a hundred percent. Um, hey, and I can recommend like watching it. Uh, there really, honestly, there was only one match I could say that was not good <laughs> through night one or night two, but I'll get to that. I'll get to that. Uh, next match that followed was uh, the six pack tag team ladder match for the undisputed tag team championship the rules for that were actually interesting because both sets of titles were hanging over the ring and they explicitly said that both sets of titles needed to be pulled down um and they obviously would be pulled down separately. The match would continue until both sets were pulled down. And as soon as they established those rules, my head immediately went, this is going to be how they separate those titles, isn't it? And that's exactly what they did. Um, because Austin Theory and Grayson Waller ended up getting the SmackDown tag team titles pretty early in. Uh, and the Awesome Truth ended up getting the Raw titles uh, at the end. Um, this actually marks our truths first WrestleMania win, which is really cool for him. He's been working for them for so long, and he's just been doing this wrestling for so long, uh, providing comedy, providing serious moments, he's so underrated and it's really cool to see him get that moment that he definitely deserves it's just really cool and everybody else did crazy work in that match um absolutely fun match to watch um it was really cool really and you're gonna hear me say that a lot because it, there wasn't a whole lot in wrestlemania that missed or anything like that so um but this match very fun very fun to watch uh, next match was uh, Rey Mysterio and Andrade against Santos Escobar and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Now, they had their respectful groups out there, the LWL and Legado del Fantasma. Um, and it, in general, it, the match, really cool. There was this really cool like double cross body moment by Andrade and Rey Mysterio it was really sick um and everybody was performing as you would expect 
more or less. Um, but in the the way the match ended with uh, you know an interference from people who weren't even like involved was I, that was about the only thing that I could really mark against it personally. I, I felt kind of weird with that, but that's just me, right? <laughs> um, it I felt like it could have ended a bit better but it was it was still fine the match in and of itself really good and a lot of talent in it and they all definitely brought their best um now the next match jay uso versus jimmy uso this match that that match was the one that made me go okay you 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 went out there and I'm, I'm sure you did your best, but you didn't do your best. <laughs> um, the way they booked this match where it was like, OK, this is these two have this is this match has been coming um, since literally uh, they were kids since they were born like this match was like being built towards um, that's how they booked it that's how they even showed it in like their video montage and such it, it's it was interesting right um, but it's weird because the build on the way to the match wasn't great um, they they had moments but in general they, there was a whole lot that wasn't exactly as clear as it could have been, um, I feel, and they didn't get enough room to really push, like, why did Jimmy feel the way that he felt um, to the point of, you know, being willing to hold Jay down and it took until pretty much almost the end of the feud for Jimmy to actually say something about how as long as he was around, he wouldn't allow Jay to succeed, basically. Um, to, to, to hammer in that concept of I'm jealous of my brother. And they made it weird up until that point. So it was really awkward. And then the match itself, like okay have you ever like played a fighting game and like <laughs> had a mirror match with someone who was like around your level in skill right that is that is how that match came off they were constantly doing um uh, many of the same moves to each other and there were so many super kicks and the match was slower than it needed to be it's a bit plotting at times and it's just kind of like, oh, dang, this, I know you two are better than this. You've had crazy matches with other people. But I think that's the key. I think that's the key is that other people, right? You have to keep in mind they go against other teams and stuff. And that chemistry is going to change. And I think that is actually where they shine, like doing the tag team thing. Like that's that's what they do, right? or just in general in their single respective singles matches um so this match was not great and you know the the key moment in the match that stood out was just jimmy trying to faint jay into like believing that he was sorry so that he could get an upper hand in the match and it it immediately fell flat for me i caught it out right away i'm like oh he's he, he's fainting him <laughs> um and yeah it, it that match could have been better and considering the build i wish it was um so it it wasn't great <laughs> it's about the only match i feel that wasn't great so you know uh we take what we can get we move on uh, the next match, uh, Jade Cargill, Bianca Belair, Naomi uh, against Damage Control. That's Dakota Kai, Asuka, and Kairi Sane. Um, absolutely love that match. Um, having Jade be the centerpiece of the match pretty much is a fantastic move because 
she is a fantastic wrestler and obviously not taking anything away from anybody else in the match uh but i am a big jade cargill fan um she's she's really cool right and she got to show that in this match uh also bianca got to use her hair as a whip again and that that's oh uh i i always feel for people who um have to take that uh as a spot in a match because uh, the last somebody who she slashed with that hair whip uh they it 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 was brutal it left welt they looked like they were holding their stomach to keep their insides inside and i was like uh, it made me wince <laughs> it made me wince um so yeah that was the thing uh but the match was really cool um jade bianca and naomi won uh once uh jade got the tag and jade came in and just wrecked chop she's she's insane and they wanted to show that uh they wanted that to pre be presented as the centerpiece so it it worked it worked and it was really cool um very very fun match uh next match Sami Zayn versus gunther and gunther has been intercontinental champion for more than 600 days i believe the number was 666 days um the Sami Zayn story leading up to it was actually super interesting because his entire deal right was that he he needed to like prove to himself that all the faith that everybody else put in him was not misplaced that he wasn't gonna let everybody down and in general that he could actually do this um Gunther didn't take him seriously and it was super interesting that the way that they got Chad Gable involved because Chad Gable wanted to be the one to take down Gunther. Chad Gable, somebody who's a beast in the ring in his own right, um, wanted to be the one to take down Gunther. And he couldn't do it, no matter how much he tried. And then he and Sammy had to fight for the right to do it. Um, and Sammy came out on top of that. Um, so Chad knowing that he lost his chance decided to put his eggs in the same basket as Sammy's and he's like look I know that you can do it but we gotta bring that fire out of you that you had in you over like the past year and you know year and some change you need that again otherwise you're not beating Gunther and he personally trained Sammy and I love that as a build up piece like that was really really cool um it really gave Sammy this air of I am the underdog coming into this, like even more so than usual. And I absolutely need to get this done. Um, and it was it was very, very interesting. Um, also, I want to note with this match, the production team, because there was this long shot of Sammy walking from the back to the ramp. And it was just one continuous shot in the entire time. Like it's he's he's talking to his wife and his kid. He goes up towards gorilla position in the backstage area. And Kevin Owens is there. And Kevin Owens hypes him up. Hypes him up even more. And um then Sammy goes out onto the stage. And you can also hear the crowd chanting for Sammy the whole time um and it's so it's so good it it adds so much more weight to the match even before the match begins and it's really really good um it's honestly uh sammy versus gunter uh is probably my favorite match of night one really good stuff very very good match uh lots of drama sammy took a beating uh gave as much as he could in return um including a brain buster to the turnbuckle which made me physically went i i flinched i my body seized up when i saw that happen and i oh mm, mm, it it hurt <laughs> um 
Also, to uh, props to this was where I had to absolutely give like props to Michael Cole and Samantha Urban. Uh, again, like no disrespect to the other commentators, Corey Graves and Pat McAfee are fine, but Michael Cole, he did like some of his absolute best work on commentary. I feel during WrestleMania weekend, he was crazy with it. And, um, you know, when Sami Zayn hit Gunther with the Brain Buster, the way that he yelled out Brain Buster, it, it really it brought me back to, um, you know, Japanese commentators and other promotions uh, doing the same. And I'm sure that was the intended effect. And that was just really cool. It was very, very fun. Um, and when Sami won, um, Samantha Urban was overcome with emotion. Uh, word word is that she actually tells people do not tell me the results in matches um, and you know I want to be surprised as I'm there watching it up front and this actually worked out for her because you know um, she gets to give genuine emotion as she's announcing people's like victories and such um she's so good she's so good at her job it's insane it's it's actually crazy um she adds so much to proceedings and i think that you know she needs to get more credit for that she's crazy so bravo samantha urban um and then finally the end of the first night we had uh, the Rock and Roman Reigns against Cody Rhodes, Seth freaking Rollins. Um, if Cody and Seth were to win, uh, the bloodline would not be allowed uh, in Cody and Roman's match in night two. If Rock and Roman won, the next match would be bloodline rules. Well, Rock and Roman won. Uh, in part, due to the fact that The Rock was throwing his power around. He literally told the referee, um, if the referee counts while people are outside the ring, he's fired. He loses his job and threatened his job security right there. And he spent a chunk of the match actually doing this to the referee to the point that the referee actually had to apologize because, you know, the bloodline was cheating at some point and he couldn't do anything about it. It's like, well, my job's online. I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, so that got real rough real fast. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was interesting. It was interesting enough, I guess. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, Rock and Roman won. And Cody and Seth took a beating in that match. Seth especially. Seth really took a beating. And um, it... It's ironic because it was Seth who tried to warn Cody that, you know, back when he was trying to get Cody to take a title shot, take the title shot against him at WrestleMania so that they could have a, a title match and bring more prestige to Seth's belt and just ignore Roman, or let him do whatever, right? Um, it it was Seth who gave that advice but then eventually folded and decided to help Cody um, uh, but didn't take into account that hey you know I could lose everything here because I have a match against Drew McIntyre for my type so wrestling against the bloodline uh, could actually impact me later but he did that he he did exactly that and they lost so they they left with potentially nothing but we it, we, it all paid off it paid off because now we come to night two <laughs> night two uh started with drew mcintyre against seth rollins seth freaking rollins right um and seth clearly was not in shape to 
to fight Drew. To the point where Drew McIntyre was so relaxed that he actually, he went out of his way to grab his uh, girl's phone and like tweet in mid-match. And that was just funny, <laughs> especially later, but we'll, we'll get to that in a sec, right? <laughs> um, Yeah, Drew beat Seth for the belt. Uh, it was a good match, even like with Seth's injuries and everything like that. Um, it was a good match, but um, eh, Drew beat him, and he got his moment in front of live fans. He won the title in front of live fans, and you know it was what he said he wanted, so he got that. And then he saw CM Punk on commentary, which was his idea. He said he wanted CM Punk on commentary so that CM Punk could be there and watch him have his moment so he could shove it in his face. And he did. <laughs> he did. He got on the announcer's table. He got on the commentary desk and stood right there in front of CM Punk and started bragging right in CM Punk's face. And even though CM Punk was wearing an arm brace and everything like that, CM Punk used his good arm and he tripped up Drew and then he kicked the crap out of him. <laughs> he he took the brace off of his weak arm, put it on his good arm, and hit Drew over the head with the brace, with the arm with the brace. <laughs> and I remember after Drew beat Seth, I told my bestie, I said, Damien Priest still has the money in the bank briefcase. He wouldn't come out now. Drew's too fresh. He didn't really go through enough with Seth. And then when CM, he and CM, CM Punk had that altercation, um, and Drew hit him with that brace, or CM Punk hit Drew with that brace, excuse me. Um, I That's when I said, and I quote, that seems like a significant enough amount of damage. I think Damian Priest will come now. And the moment that sentence ended, the Judgment Day's music hit. And my bestie went, no shot. And I, it was so funny. It was it was really funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, Damian Priest came out. He cashed in. He, uh, he battered Drew with the briefcase, pushed him back in the ring. Hit him with the South of Heaven choke slam, and Damian Priest is the World Heavyweight Champion. I'm a big Damian Priest fan, so you know what? Congrats to him. I'm glad they, he got his moment. It was really cool, very fun to watch. Um, so uh, off the back of that, we had Bobby Lashley, Angelo Dawkins, Montez Ford against the Final Testaments, carrying Cross's group. Carrying Cross, Akam, and Reza. Um, and, you know, it was a grudge match kind of deal. And it was a good match. It, it was. Snoop Dogg was on commentary. I still don't know how I feel about that, to be entirely honest. But it was a thing. Uh, Bubba Ray Dudley was the special referee, which I didn't see that coming. I... I don't know how to feel about it, but I didn't see it coming. But, it, you know, it worked out. The match was fine. Um, and Bobby Lashley and company won. So, hey, uh, big, big plus there for them. They got to settle the grudge. That's all done. Um, next match, LA Knight against AJ Styles. Um, AJ Styles had new music. But we never got to like hear it, hear it because he he like ran, he sprinted down to the ring. So like he and LA Knight got to fighting immediately. Samantha Irvin didn't even get to finish her introduction. So that happened. It was a good match. I'm I didn't expect it to not be a good match. AJ Styles is in it and LA Knight is good. So and the match is really nice. It was good. Um, yeah, yeah, good match. Um, nothing too big or noteworthy in that one for me. Um, even though I am a AJ Styles fan, like, seriously. Uh, but mm, good match. Uh, next match over. 
uh, Logan Paul, who is the U.S. champion, uh, against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton in a triple threat match for the U.S. championship. Um, I love the way this match actually started out um, and how it progressed because Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, they've had this growing camaraderie over the fact that they don't like Logan Paul. <laughs> um... <laughs> so the match uh, even before the match starts Kevin Owens he makes his entrance and he comes down with a golf cart and he gets down to the bottom of the ramp Randy Orton's music hits so Kevin Owens backs the golf cart up the ramp to give Orton a ride down the ramp to the ring and that immediately was like okay yeah <laughs> So they spent a good chunk of the like beginning of the match beating down Logan Paul together. Um, and everything was all good until the moment somebody had to get the pin on Logan Paul. Um, now they didn't just immediately break down into an argument and that's what made this interesting because they, they, they reasoned out like, yeah, we, we both can't pin him at the same time here. And they did seemingly try to talk it through and they stood up at the same time and Kevin Owens turned his back to Randy Orton. Randy Orton turned him around and went for an RKO. Kevin Owens pushed him off. And Orton had this look on his face like, uh, I can explain. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> um, it, it was funny, but it was a good way. It was a good way to break it down because it was, it made it very clear, like, there's no disrespect here. It's just that we both want the same thing. But that's what made it break it down. And uh, it's a good match. Um, you know, same thing everybody says about Logan Paul. That where, like, it's it's almost unfortunate that he's as good as he is at wrestling because of the kind of person he is otherwise, right? Um, but he's really good at it. He is. And... It, it made the match really, really good. Really good to watch. Um, I know nothing about the YouTuber I show speed, but he was there. He was there in the prime bottle and he got dropped by Randy Orton uh, with an RKO. <laughs> so uh, I'm sure that he got a kick out of it with just being able to be involved. He did swear a lot, so they had to censor him. That was weird. Um, I don't know if he was just too hyped and you know, nobody checked him on that, but yeah, he he did. <laughs> but yeah, he got dropped by Randy Orton and RK on the table. So and that happened. Uh next match, Bailey against EO Sky. That match was so good. That match was so good. It was so much fun. And EO Sky is amazing. I'm a fan of Bailey, but EO Sky like made me an even bigger fan of hers last night she's insane um with so many things that she did uh especially the way that she countered bailey's first attempt at the rose plant flipping out of it um and the repeated moon salts she's so good so good at what she does it's so much fun to watch her um mad respect for her for everything that she does in the ring. She's crazy. Uh, and now I can't wait to see another EO Sky match at a big show. She's really good. Very, very good. Um, Bailey won that match. Um, and, you know, it was fun. Uh, just watching that whole thing. You know, it reminds me, I didn't actually mention who won Logan Paul's and like Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens versus Randy Orton. Logan Paul is still the U.S. champion. I, I should I should bring that up. <laughs> um. So yeah, that that was the result of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but Bailey actually beat Yo Sky for the belt. Um. Again, very good match. Even bigger fan of Yo Sky now. Absolutely insane. <laughs> um. I definitely want to see more EOSky matches now. 
Uh, I'm gonna look some stuff up. I'm very curious. Um, and finally, we have Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns um, for the Undisputed Championship. And that match was literally just under an hour long. And it was crazy. But it was good. It was good in all the, like, best ways, honestly. Um, Roman Reigns did some trash talking and nonsense in the first half of the match. And it just, yeah, I'm going to miss hearing that for a while because, you know, that was a big part of the tribal chief character. And now that Cody has won, Cody has finished his story, TM, copyright, you know, all of that. We might not see Roman for a while. And I think people are going to recognize what we had with him now that he's going to be taking that break. He's going to be on the hiatus. Um, But yeah, the match was so good. Like, there was a point early in the match where Roman hit Cody with his own move. He hit a crossroads on Cody. And he was like, oh, that move sucks. It it doesn't ever beat anybody. It doesn't pin anybody. He doesn't win matches with this. It's like, he does. What do you mean? Um, but yeah, it, so much trash talking and everything like that. But of course things had to devolve, right? Because it's bloodline rules. Um, since Rock and Roman won the night before. So uh, when things it devolved, it was very interesting to watch it play out because it played out like an actual like JRPG fight. Um, because Cody had the upper hand. And all of a sudden, here comes Jimmy. It's like the it's like Roman summoned an ad to actually help him out. Help him out. And uh Jimmy came out and then Jay came out to neutralize Jimmy. And yeah, he did. He speared Jimmy off the ramp and through a table. And that one interaction between them during that match last night was better to me than their entire match the night before. <laughs> they made up for it with that, and that's insane. Um, so then the match continues goes on um more back and forth cody seems like he's getting the upper hand again now out comes solo sikoa and uh solo he you know turns the tide once again towards roman's favor he and roman hit cody with a uh, spear and a spike combo, and Cody stays in the match. It's He's still in it. He refuses to die. So who comes out to help Cody and even the odds again? It's John Cena. Which, okay, makes sense. He's got beef with Roman. He's got beef with Solo. Um, so he comes out to even the odds. And uh, he hits Roman with an attitude adjustment. Hits Solo with one through a table. And, yeah. It's, uh... It, it, you know, it's back to pretty much an even playing field. So now The Rock comes out. And The Rock comes out, and he and Cena have a stare down. And that's actually, like, a really nice throwback for them because they've had beef. They've had issues. Um... And that was really fun. Uh, But Cena gets dropped by The Rock immediately. Rock bottom. And uh, that, that's, you know, that's pretty much it for Cena. Rock takes off his weight belt that says Mama Rhodes. (laughs) And uh, he's about to whip. uh, He's about to whip Cody with it. When the Shields music comes on. And out comes Seth in full Shield gear. And he's about to attack The Rock with a chair. But Roman sees him, gets in the ring, and cuts Seth off with a Superman punch. Saves The Rock. Um, And The Rock, again, is uh, 
waiting so that he can get his, you know, get his uh, shots in, do what he needs to do. Uh, Roman's outside the ring at this point in time. He hit Seth and took him out of the ring, and uh, or he hit Seth, and took him out, and then The Rock, like, is just in there, about to go back to trying to whip Cody when the gong goes off and the Undertaker comes out. Now, in the moment, I couldn't figure out why the Undertaker was out there, but upon reflection, um. I remember that The Undertaker did have history with not just Roman, but a number of people involved with Roman or his family. For years, uh, Undertaker's had issues with The Rock. He's had issues with Paul Heyman because Paul Heyman was the advocate for the person who caused him to streak. He's had issues with other people in their family. And of course, Roman was also one of the only people to give him a loss at WrestleMania. So thinking back on it, it makes sense. But in the moment, I was like, what what possible reason <laughs> would The Undertaker have for coming out here? And it didn't click for me right then. But, you know, thinking about it, no, it makes sense. Um, so, oh, that's it. Um, the Undertaker was basically a summon. He came out, hit the rock with a choke slam, and then he disappeared with the rock. <laughs> they they both vanished. Um, and you know that leaves a very interesting situation because now Roman's in the ring again, and he's got the chair that Seth brought down. Cody's down on one side, Seth is down on the other. And Roman's looking left and right at Cody, Seth, and he he has a choice. It's like a QTE, right? Um, he has a choice between hitting Cody and ensuring his victory, or hitting Seth and and getting his catharsis for ten years of PTSD. And he couldn't keep it in. He couldn't keep it in. He went for Seth. He went for Seth over Cody. And the moment he did that, I told my bestie, I said, I understand. But that's going to cost him. He just gave it up. And uh, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Um, he, he got caught by Cody. And uh, Cody hit him with three crossroads in a row. And that was enough to pin him. And uh, yeah, and Cody finished his story. He got a huge emotional moment. He had family and friends come out, people that have been, uh, they've had their own problems with the bloodline and everything. Um, it was so it was so nice it was really good really cool really fun to watch and there was so much payoff to a lot of the drama and we still have so many interesting stories now uh there's a lot that's gonna happen and it's gonna be really interesting to just see how it all goes down um honestly the jimmy and jay match that's the only match where I feel like eh, you could have had this match anywhere else. This didn't have to be a Mania match, but I understand that you wanted the payoff, right? I get it. Um, But the rest of the matches were either really good or just fantastic uh, on both nights. And honestly, I would like definitely say it's probably one of my favorite Wrestlemanias to watch uh, it's very fun very fun uh, if I had to give it a rating overall 9 out of 10 and we gotta do something about that Jimmy and Jay match at least I got to kind of make up the moment the next ma you know the next night over but uh, the match itself is like mm, yeah, you know y'all got it anyways uh, that's enough of my rambling about WrestleMania. Uh, 
I don't know how many people are gonna sit for 40 minutes and listen to me ramble about this but you know if you do I definitely appreciate it um I'll get back to regular content soon uh but for now hopefully you all are having a good day you all take it easy take care of yourselves catch you later